Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com and supported by AI study tool called Visdolia. At the end of this session, I would be providing you with the link for the practice sessions of the topic which I am going to cover. This is via Visdolia, which will help you in understanding the topic much better. So, moving on to the topic, this is the final part of uh, Hodgkin lymphoma series where I will be discussing about staging and clinical features and a bit about treatment of Hodgkin lymphoma. Having understood the concepts of pathogenesis and the morphology of Hodgkin lymphoma, let's now look into the staging of Hodgkin lymphoma, which will help us in understanding the clinical features as well as the treatment modalities for the same. So, we all know that the Hodgkin lymphoma is categorized into two broad categories. One is classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Another is nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. Classical Hodgkin lymphoma is further subtyped into nodular sclerosis Hodgkin lymphoma, mixed cellularity Hodgkin lymphoma, lymphocyte rich Hodgkin lymphoma, and lymphocyte depleted Hodgkin lymphoma. We have, you know, we have learnt about the various morphological differentiating features between each of these subtypes of Hodgkin lymphoma in my previous session. Right now, moving on to understanding the staging. Now, we all know what is meant by staging, right? Staging is basically important for us to understand the extent of the tumor, right? So, in this case, I mean, in the, in the context of Hodgkin lymphoma or even non-Hodgkin lymphoma for that matter, the staging is by Ann Arbor classification. So, this was first introduced in a meeting in Ann Arbor, which is a city in Michigan, USA, way back in 1971. Remember, this staging was classified in 1971 and it still holds good for Hodgkin as well as non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Now, what are the important things which we need to know, which, we, which, which, which helps us in, you know, staging of Hodgkin lymphoma? One is physical examination, two, radiologic imaging of the abdomen, pelvis and chest and finally, the biopsy of the bone marrow to look for involvement of bone marrow. Stage 1. What is the stage 1? Stage 1 is basically involvement of a single lymph node region or single extra lymphatic organ or extra lymphatic site. It is stage 1. Remember, this line indicates the level of diaphragm. Now, stage 2 is involvement of two or more lymph node regions. In this case, it is cervical lymph node and the axillary lymph node. But note that these lymph node regions are on the same side of the diaphragm. That's very, very important, right? So, it is on the same side of the diaphragm, involvement of two or even more okay, lymph node regions. Or it can be localized involvement of an extra lymphatic organ or the side when it is called as 2E. When it is involving the extra lymphatic organ, it is called, it is denoted by Alphabet E, right? Now moving on to the stage three. What is the stage three? Stage three is again lymph node regions on the both sides of diaphragm. Okay. In this case, it could be you know, in, in, you can see that there is cervical, axillary, inguinal lymph node, and even abdominal group of lymph nodes. Okay, on either side of the diaphragm. It is very important. It can be without or with localized involvement of an extra lymphatic organ. So, difference between stage 2 and stage 3 is that stage 2 is only on one side of the diaphragm or the same side of the diaphragm, whereas stage 3 involving the both sides of the diaphragm. That's very, very important. Whereas stage 4 is basically diffuse involvement. Okay, It is one or more extra lymphatic organs or sites with or without lymphatic involvement. In this case, you are seeing lots of lymph node involvement, abdominal organ involvement and even the bone marrow. Okay, So, stage 3 and stage 4 are considered as disseminated diseases. Right? So, remember you have stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4. This basically is a an arbor classification. Now, all these stages are further divided on the basis of the symptoms, whether the symptoms are there or not there. If it is not there, it is called absence. If it is there, it is presence. And what are the symptoms? They can be unexplained fever, drenching night sweats and or unexplained weight loss, which is often greater than 10% of the normal body weight. 
now now that we have understood the clinic you know uh, staging of uh, hodgkin lymphoma let us see how these lymphomas manifest most often majority of the cases hodgkin lymphoma presents as painless lymph node enlargement this is the most common presentation of hodgkin lymphoma remember it is painless lymph node enlargement in cases of lymphoma which is nodular sclerosis or lymphocyte predominant type 1 particularly the stage 1 or stage 2 these are often free of systemic manifestations okay they do they will not have those you know fever night sweats or even loss of body weight okay this is often seen in stage 1 and stage 2 they are free of systemic manifestations whereas the disseminated ones the mixillarity the lymphocyte depletion stage 3 and stage 4 they often have systemic manifestations okay now if you have lymph node enlargement which is painless along with systemic manifestations you should be looking at you know either stage 3 or stage 4 hodgkin lymphoma which often they are mixed cellularity or lymphocyte depletion types most cases of classical hodgkin lymphoma when i say classical it means all of all the four subtypes they also have cutaneous immune unresponsiveness okay this is also referred to as anergy now what is this cutaneous immune unresponsiveness why it is unresponsive and that's because of expression of factors such as interleukin 10 we know that rsl secretes lot of chemokines and cytokines and one among them is interleukin 10 which suppress the helper 1 immune responses and that is why you have cutaneous immune unresponsiveness this is seen in most cases of classical hodgkin lymphoma now having understood the you know, clinical features how do these lymphomas spread okay it has a very typical way of spread it almost always involves nodes lymph nodes first then goes to the spleen then hepatic involvement and finally involvement of the marrow and other tissues that's the disseminated lymphomas so this is very typical way of spreading of hodgkin lymphoma now how do you treat hodgkin lymphomas if the lymphoma is diagnosed in early stages stage 1 or 2 or the you no know, the, the ones which have good prognosis like nodular uh, sclerosis and lymphocyte predominance one they have uh, they will be subjected to field radiotherapy however it was seen that when they give field radiotherapy it also had much higher incidence of certain other malignancies secondary malignancies including lung cancer melanoma and even breast cancers patients who have had radiotherapy they would have presented with you know other malignancies secondary malignancies but if they are if the patients were treated with chemotherapy particularly alkylating agents they also had higher incidence of aml as second malignancies later in their lives after the treatment but then now in present scenario you know there is minimal use of radiotherapy and it also employs less genotoxic chemotherapeutic agents it reduces the incidence of secondary tumors but remember there is no loss of therapeutic efficacy you maintain the therapeutic efficacy and then you reduce the incidence of secondary tumors that is the current mode of treatment okay remember hodgkin lymphoma is a very good lymphoma in the sense it can be cured now what if conventional therapy fails now the next choice is you give them immune checkpoint inhibitors blocks the pd1 the receptor for pdl1 and pdl2 we have understood in the pathogenesis that pd1 is very important this kind of treatment is very very highly effective remember classic hodgkin lymphoma is the human cancer which is most responsive to these immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy what is the prognosis now staging is the most important prognostic variable because stage 1 and stage 2a a meaning absence of systemic symptoms the cure rate is close to 90 percent whereas stage 4a and stage 4b either with or without symptoms these are disseminated diseases but still disease free survival 5 is around 60 to 70 percent that's about the prognosis of hodgkin lymphoma now with this uh, i have completed hodgkin lymphoma in three part series 
in part 1 i talked about the pathogenesis in the part 2 i have talked about the morphology and in this we have learnt about the staging clinical features and the treatment aspects now having completed this i would suggest you to click on the link for the practice session via visdolia what this platform does is you know it will give you a series of multiple choice questions which you can answer them which helps you in strengthening the understanding of this topic the best part of you know this platform is it does give you instant feedback i would i suggest you to try this visdolia and if you have tried visdolia please write to me in the comment section as to how do you feel about visdolia thank you for watching if you have liked this video click the like button do comment please do comment about the visdolia as a platform for active learning if you find this video useful and the channel useful please consider subscribing and don't forget to share thank you